Hello and welcome to my third tutorial about PrePowMax. This time I will show you how to perform a model analysis in the software. As an example, I will use a simply supported beam with a square cross section. As you already know from the previous videos, the first thing we have to do is to create a new model and select a unit system. I will choose the one with millimeters like before. Uh, and once again, I have to import the geometry in the step format, just like we did in the previous videos. Now, since the geometry is imported, uh, I can create a mesh. Uh, let's choose the maximum element size, which will be 10 millimeters. In this case, I can preview the mesh, confirm this, and now hit the Create Mesh button to uh, generate the mesh. Since the mesh is generated and the software switched to the uh, FE model tab automatically, I can set all the necessary analysis features. Uh, let's start from the material definition. Uh, it will be named steel, uh, the name is, is just for convenience, uh, and I will use the same elastic properties like in uh, pr the previous videos. Uh, so let's specify the Young's modulus and Poisson's ratio. Uh, however, uh, in this particular case, uh, I have to define the density as well, because uh, this is needed uh, for the uh, kind of analysis that we perform here. Uh, so let's the add the density. And now you may notice that the units of density are quite uh, specific uh, and I can go to my uh, sheet where I have uh, all the data, input data and uh, analytical results and you can see the density here. I will just uh, input it in different units because uh, those are the units that are associated with this uh, unit system that I selected in the beginning of this video. So let's specify mm, the density uh, using those units. And now I can uh, confirm this uh, and create a section. It will be solid section again. I will apply this section to uh, the beam. Uh, and now I can proceed to the definition of the analysis step. Uh, this time I will not choose the static step because we want to perform the model analysis uh, so the right step to choose is the frequency one. Uh, what we have to set here mm, is the number of frequencies. I could leave the default value but uh, I will choose 12 frequencies. This should be enough uh, for this particular case. Uh, so let's uh, confirm this uh, and now we can proceed to remaining definitions. Mm. What we have to set now is boundary conditions. Uh, those will be uh, equivalent to the ones from the pre first tutorial uh, where we also had a simply supported beam. Uh, so let's uh, switch to uh, geometry view and of course it's not necessary but just for, for convenience. Let's pick this edge here and constrain uh, all the translation on degrees of freedom. Uh, and now let's define another boundary condition of the same type uh, but apply it to the opposite edge uh, and let's constrain the first two uh, degrees of freedom leaving the uh, actual one uh, free. Uh, okay, so we have the boundary conditions now. Uh, you could think that we will define loads now, but uh, for the model analysis it's not uh, necessary, actually it's not even uh, possible, because model analysis do not uh, use loads in, in the typical form uh, that we know from the static uh, simulations. Uh, so actually the, the simulation is uh, already uh, prepared, I can run it. Uh, so I will go to the analysis settings and run the simulation. It shouldn't take long uh, to calculate it. We should have the, the results quite soon. So just just we have we have to wait just a bit, uh, and the results are, as you can see, already uh, available. So let's switch to the results. And now uh, let's focus on the post-processing of of the results of this analysis. Mm, as output from model analysis, we get natural fre frequencies, uh, which are also called resonant frequencies, and their corresponding mode shapes. Here you can notice the number of, of the currently selected mode uh, and its corresponding natural frequency. Uh, with this button, uh, we can go uh, to the next mode, uh, next one, and with this button, we can go to the previous one, so we can control the uh, currently displayed modes with those buttons, or we can select them from the list available here. Uh, it's, it's an easy uh, thing to do. Mm, so now, since we have the results, we can discuss them a bit more. Uh, what what we have to know uh, is what are the, the f natural frequencies, what they actually are. Um, so if there is an external excitation that causes vibrations with one of those frequencies, then uh, we have to expect the resonance to occur. Uh, and the resonance means that the vibrations will have their maximum amplitude uh, and this may lead to uh, actual damage in the structure. 
Uh, the mode shapes that we see here show how the uh, structure will be deformed at each of the natural frequencies. Uh, but we have to keep in mind something that is very important. Uh, the um, displacements uh, shown here, their values are not the actual displacements. Uh, they are not real values. Uh, and to, if you want to obtain the real stress and displacement values for a given structure uh, at a selected frequency of vibration and with a sp specific load uh, magnitude, then we have to perform so-called frequency response uh, or otherwise steady-state dynamic analysis. This type of simulation is currently not supported in Prepomex, but we can perform this using Calculex itself. Uh, so let's compare the, the results with analytical values. Uh, here I have the sheet with, with analytical results um, and you can see what are the subsequent uh, natural frequencies and we can compare them with the frequencies uh, that are shown uh, for each of the um, natural mode shapes. You may notice that uh, there are more uh, natural frequencies here mm, than we have uh, in this analytical mm, in this analytical solution. Uh, this is related to the limitation of, of the analytical uh, solution. It's on, it has it's limited to, to only selected modes. Uh, it won't show us all the modes. Uh, so not not only we may notice some differences uh, between the results. For example, I will show you. Uh, that um, this one here is uh, 183 hertz and uh, the corresponding one here is pretty close but, but still uh, not the, the same value and if we go further uh, we may notice that this mode is actually missing from our analytical solution uh, and we may also notice that this one is also quite off uh, and this one is uh, a bit closer to, to the one here uh, so you may notice that mm, some modes are missing from analytical solution and some uh, are a bit different and, uh, as I said this is related to the limitation of the analytical solution of course the, the mesh plays uh, a, a role, important role here as well but uh, in this particular case uh, what we have to worry about is uh, limitation of, of the mm, solution mm, that we have uh, here. We use it just for comparison, uh, not to obtain all the uh, model, uh, model uh, all the natural frequencies. Uh, I should also mention that model analysis have some additional uses, uh, and one of the most interesting applications is the detection of under constraints, which will be presented in the form of rigid body modes of vibrations. Uh, those uh, will occur at frequencies close to zero. Uh, and you can also use model analysis to find parts in assembly uh, models that aren't properly connected to the rest of the structure. So those are quite interesting uses of uh, model analysis. Okay, I think that uh, this is it for, for this first third uh, Prepomex tutorial. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. Uh, again, feel free to ask any questions and suggest topics for future tutorials in the comments. Have a nice day and see you in the next video.